The Divine Comedy, The Inferno, by Dante Alighieri. Canto 1, the voyager narrator astray by night in a dark forest, morning and a sunlit hill. Three beasts that impede his ascent. The encounter with Virgil, who offers his guidance and an alternate path through two of the three realms the voyager must visit. When I journeyed half of our life's way, I found myself within a shadowed forest, for I had lost the path that does not stray. Ah, it is hard to speak of what it was, the savage forest, dense and difficult, which even in recall renews my fear. So bitter, death is hardly more severe, but to retell the good discovered there, I'll also tell the other things I saw. I cannot clearly say how I entered the wood. I was so full of sleep just at the point where I abandoned the true path. When I reached the bottom of the hill, it rose along the boundary of the valley that had harassed my heart with so much fear. I looked on high and saw its shoulders clothed already by the rays of the same planet which serves to lead men straight along all roads. At this my fear was somewhat quieted, for though the night of sorrow I had spent, the lake within my heart felt terror present, and just as he who, with exhausted breath, having escaped from sea to shore, turns back to watch the dangerous waters he has quit, so did my spirit, still fugitive, turn back to look intently at the pass that never has let any man survive. I let my tired body rest a while, moving again. I tried the lonely slope. My firm foot always was the one below. And almost where the hillside starts to rise, look there, a leopard, very quick and lithe, a leopard covered with a spotted hide. He did not disappear from sight, but stayed. Indeed, he so impeded my ascent that I had often to turn back again. The time was the beginning of the morning. The sun was rising now in fellowship, with the same stars that had escorted it when divine love first moved those things of beauty, so that the hour and the gentle season gave me good cause for hopefulness on seeing the beast before me with his speckled skin. But hope was hardly able to prevent the fear I felt when I beheld a lion. His head held high and ravenous with hunger. Even the air around him seemed to shudder. The lion seemed to make his way against me. And then a she-wolf showed herself. She seemed to carry every craving in her leanness. She had already brought despair to many. The very sight of her so weighed me with fearfulness that I abandoned hope of ever climbing up that mountain slope. Even as he who glories while he gains will, when the time has come to tally loss, lament with every thought and turn despondent, so was I when I faced that restless beast, which, even as she stalked me, step by step, had thrust me back to where the sun is speechless. While I retreated down to lower ground, before my eyes there suddenly appeared one who seemed faint because of the long silence. When I saw him in that vast wilderness, have pity on me, were the words I cried, whatever you may be, a shade a man. He answered me, Not man, I once was man. Both of my parents came from Lombardy, and both claimed Mantua as native city. And I was born, though late, sub Julio, and lived in Rome under the good Augustus, the season of the false and lying gods. I was a poet, and I sang the righteous song of Anchises, who had come from Troy when flames destroyed the pride of the Ilium. But why do you return to wretchedness? Why not climb up the mountain of delight, the origin and cause of every joy? And are you then that Virgil, you the fountain that freely pours so rich a stream of speech? I answered him with shame upon my brow. O oh, light and honor of all other poets, may my long study and the intense love that made me search your volume serve me now. You are my master and my author, you the only one from whom my writing drew the noble style for which I have been honored. You see the beast that made me turn aside. Help me, O oh famous sage, to stand against her, for she has made my blood and pulses shudder. It is another path that you must take, he answered when he saw my tearfulness. If you would leave this savage wilderness, the beast that is the cause of your outcry allows no man to pass along her track. Her nature is so squalid, so malicious that she can never sate her greedy will, and when she is fed, she is hungrier than ever. She mates with many living souls, and shall yet mate with many more, until the greyhound arrives, inflicting painful death on her. That hound will never feed on land or pewter, but find his fair in wisdom, love, and virtue. His place of birth shall be between two felts. 
He will restore low-lying Italy, for which the maid Camilla died of wounds, and Nissus, Turnus, and Euryalus. And he will hunt that beast through every city until he thrusts her back again into hell, from which she was first sent above by envy. Therefore, I think and judge it best for you to follow me, and I shall guide you, taking you from this place through an eternal place, where you shall hear the howls of desperation and see the ancient spirits in their pain. Each of them laments his second death. And you shall see these souls who will contend within the fire, for they hope to reach, whenever that may be, the blessed people. If you would then ascend as high as these, a soul more worthy than I am to guide you, I'll leave you in her care when I depart, because that emperor who reigns above, since I have been rebellious to his law, would not allow me entry into his city. He governs everywhere, but he rules from there. Oh, happy that he chooses to be there. And I replied, O oh, poet, by that God whom you had never come to know, I beg you that I may flee this evil and worse evils, to lead to the place of which you speak, that I may see the gateway of St. Peter and those whom you describe as sorrowful. Then he set out, and I moved on behind him.